Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Yosha and I'm your go-to channel for all things real. Famebit announced some changes that are coming to the program and I felt like it would be appropriate for me to share them here with you all. But I also wanted to just film a video here discussing what's coming and how it's affecting me and how it also may affect you. I know that some of you may be using Famebit, you have over 5,000 subscribers, and you're just using the platform to kind of get your feet wet when it comes to networking and introducing yourself to brands and making money on YouTube. Of course, this change came during a very difficult time for everybody and they are basically putting us in a month of transition before they start cutting things off. But I wanted to kind of give you all a breakdown. I will also link the article down below that details what changes are coming with a very detailed time chart so you know when these things are going into effect. So for those of you who are not familiar with Famebit, Famebit is basically a tool that is backed by YouTube that allows creators and brands to network, meet each other, and work together. It's an awesome opportunity that's been around for several years now. When the program initially launched, it had a requirement of a thousand subscribers in order to be part of the program. And then shortly after, I want to say maybe around 2017, they upped the requirement to 5,000 subscribers. And basically, once you reach that threshold, you create an account and you're able to go and pitch yourself to companies and let them know that you want to work for them. And it's kind of like an offer up or eBay type environment where you get to see different brands list their products, their items, different things that they're selling. I mean, everything from hair extensions to health supplements to air mattresses to clothes, just different items that they sell on there and that they want you to promote with your YouTube channel. You can make anywhere between $50 and $1,000 depending on how many subscribers you have and how many views you have and how good your proposal is. So basically it's a space for those that are looking for sponsorships to basically find legitimate opportunities to promote brands and make money. So with the changes that are coming very soon, the self-service site is going away completely. And if you don't have at least 25,000 subscribers, you will not be able to participate in what Famebit is going to. Based on the email that I read, it seems that they are trying to go in the direction of the full service option, which is one where they will have professionals to help match creators to brands that they feel align best with the creator's niche, the creator's current audience, and the brand's desired outcome. And so it's basically putting the YouTube professionals in the middle versus letting people that kind of want to operate on their own terms figure it out and work the kinks out themselves. A bigger creator can benefit from this because it will help them to only get the brand deals that are relevant to what they want to push. But on the other hand, a lot of people that are under 25K have a strong influence and they have more than one basket in which they can pull from as far as reach. So it's kind of like undercutting those people, myself included, that could bring things to the table but just don't have that subscriber count yet. As of April 28, 2020, Famebit offers two services. One is a self-service website at famebit.com. It allows creators to independently find brands to work with, submit deal proposals, and complete campaigns. The second service, which is one that was unbeknownst to me because I never used it, um, is a full service program where a team of experts proactively match creators with brands and provide end-to-end -end campaign management and delivery. So, from that, I can say that there may have been some issues with creators not fulfilling their end of the deal when getting a proposal accepted and or the brands not fulfilling their promise as far as delivering payment after a proposal had been approved and the video had been submitted. So I'm thinking that if they are going in a direction where there's going to be a campaign manager to kind of help throughout the process, it will help to have like a mutual party that is unbiased on both sides to help kind of work out some of the kinks that may have been taking place with the self-serve stuff that was going on. The other thing is they say in this clause down here at the bottom of their explanation, 
On the creator side, we've developed insights basing matchmaking tools that allow for equal access to branded content deals for any eligible creator. We're democratizing the opportunity for a creator to partner with a brand based solely on their effectiveness in reaching and influencing the campaign's target consumer audience. So again, I think that this is basically a way to ensure that the brand that is asking for the creator to make the video is getting the best return on their investment because sometimes someone can have 50,000 subscribers, but their audience may be, you know, teens and young adults um, that are in college. But the product is really for people that are in their mid 20s to late 30s and they're putting the video out. It's getting a bunch of views, but they're not getting revenue from the items that they are marketing because they gave it to the person that had a bunch of views, but their audience doesn't really line up with what the brand is actually trying to get out there and for the people that it's getting out there. So it sounds like FameBit is going in this direction to better assist the brands and the creators with giving them items to market to people that are relevant. Because a lot of people just think, oh, well, I have this amount of subscribers, so I have this amount of influence. But subscribers does not equal influence. In fact, a lot of times on YouTube, if you look at your analytics, you may have um, 80%. Like, I know me personally, I have between 75 and 80% of not subscribed people that watch my videos. And so that means that my influence is really only over... Um, the 20% of people that are subscribed or that 25% that are subscribed, what you'll see is that the people that are subscribed to your channel will watch you longer because you've built a bond and you've built a community with them. And then the ones that aren't subscribed, they either are like, you know, your, 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 I don't, I don't want to say trolls, but they're your people that, you know, are knowing of you. They like what you do, but they just haven't been sold yet. Or they're the people that are actually searching for the content that you make and they found you, but they just haven't subscribed yet. Your stuff has to be searchable, right? When you're doing reviews and things like that, that is a great example of searchable content because when you're reviewing a product, your audience is not your friends, it's not your family, it's the people that are searching to buy that product. A lot of my videos that took off in comparison to my normal uploads were videos where I reviewed items that I tried. I tried a new waist trainer, I tried a new corset for working out, I tried a new, you know, baby product. I did not necessarily get a lot of views from my close friends and family and the people that I've built in my YouTube community because we've built a bond. But understand that people were searching on Google, on YouTube to know what is the best waist trainer for me as a size 3X? What is the best waist belt that I can wear for me as someone that is, you know, size 44 triple D. So understand that when you're doing reviews, there's a person in mind that is looking for that video. Those are not the type of videos where people are like going to necessarily subscribe. It's somebody that's looking for something. Somebody that's interested in an iPhone, they're going to actually search and do research on what phone to get. They may watch 15 different videos about an iPhone. They may not subscribe to every channel, but that specific video was of interest to them because they were interested in buying a new phone. When somebody is looking at for advice, they may subscribe to that person because you give good advice and you give good advice regularly. It's a different type of audience. So when you bring that back to FameBit, it's basically like some people have a mixed audience. Some people are beauty influencers. Some people are fashion and they do clothes. Some people are weight loss. Some people are cooking. Some people are doing makeup, mommy, life, vlogging, all that stuff. So it really depends on what your niche is to understand who your audience is and who you can be influential upon to make them buy something from you. And so with these new measurement tools that FameBit is putting in, I'm really thinking that these new things that they're putting in their system is going to focus in on that more so than just your black and white numbers. Like, do you have 5,000? Yes, you can be in the program. When you are trying to work for someone, you have to show them why you are the perfect fit. You're applying for a job. You can't just go in and be like, well, I want free stuff and you know, I got 5,000 subscribers, so you should want to work for me. No, you have to be able to show 
This is how many people watch my video every week. This is what time I upload. My audience is women between the age of 18 and 34, and they are proven to watch me regularly. Look at these statistics. If you don't have that to back you up, it's a little bit harder when you're asking someone to pay you for something. Now, when these companies reach out to you, that's completely different. If they reached out to you, then that means they saw something in you. They found your information because you have it listed and you are able to kind of do some negotiation here because you're like, well, you reached out to me. This is what I charge. This is why I charge what I charge. This is my reach. But I'm learning that numbers matter to, to these businesses, to these companies. And a lot of times we sell ourselves short by not charging when the companies reach out. But then when we reach out to companies that are well versed in this, we're not getting anywhere because we're not even able to explain why we have worth. The first step is, of course, knowing your worth, but you have to be able to communicate your worth, too. So I know I got off a little bit, but I'm going to just say that because I think it's very important to understand. And then I just want to go to this last part where it says the full service program is working well for creators and brands. We've seen creators earn 30 times more from full service deals and from our self service deals, which only represent about 4% of total fame bid payouts to creators. So honestly, it sounds like fame bid is trying to save some money. So it sounds like there were people making money from the self serve option. There were probably some creators that were killing it, but they were only making 4% of payouts, which means that fame bit is seeing that as a way to save money and pour it into the full service option, which probably costs them a little more money because they have to have this person in the middle to help with those. And also I think that the 30% is a little more justifiable for them to um, invest in. And I think that a lot of companies are taking cuts in these entrepreneurial endeavors in ways that will help them make money, but then also help others make money. But, you know, someone has to get the short end of the stick and it just happens to be us. If you are interested in the full service option, the United States based eligible creators who have over 25,000 subscribers can sign up for FameBit full service in YouTube Studio. I'm going to look at what eligible means. Um, there's a, actually a page for this as well, like detailing what you have to be. You have to be 18 or older. You have to be in the YouTube partner program. You have to be in the United States and you have to have no community guideline strikes in order to be eligible for FameBit. And the newest requirement is that you have to have 25,000 subscribers. Important dates to know. April 28th, you cannot create a new FameBit account. As the site stands today, you cannot create an account anymore because it's going away soon. So they're not letting any new creators make accounts. If you have an existing account, then you can sign in. On May 15th, no more opportunities are going to be posted in FameBit.com for creators to bid on and, and you know submit proposals for. On June 1st, Creators will not be able to submit any more proposals or use the mobile app. On June 8th, creators can no longer be hired for deals. So, and on July 31st, all campaigns must be closed and payments must be settled. You'll have to email support at famebit.com in order to get those outstanding issues addressed. There was one in here where they said that they will pay a courtesy payment for creators who've completed FameBit self-service deals in the last three months prior to the announcement, and the total will be equal to the value of the creator's self-service earnings from the last three months. Please read into that for more information. Feel free to reach out to FameBit support for clarification if this is not clear. Um, I know it's a lot being put in here, but yeah, like this is the new FameBit. I'm sad to see it go away. My takeaway is that if you have a account and you want to basically like get your feet wet and get some exposure to the brands, I would say go on in there and see who's in there and write down these company names, get the contact information, email addresses, write it down. You know what I'm saying? 
email on your own. There's plenty of YouTube videos out here that show you how you can pitch yourself to brands, how to compose that email. Don't let this stop you from doing what you got to do. It's just like if YouTube decides to change something else and you're really serious about it, you just have to keep going. And one day you will get to where you want to get to if you don't stop. And just don't put all your eggs in one basket. I know that's the biggest lesson that I've learned since being on YouTube is that you cannot put all your eggs in one basket. You have to be able to understand that one source of income is just that. It's just one source of income. There are other ways that you will be able to make this money and you just have to keep pushing. So I would love to hear your thoughts about these changes. Please let me know if you are a part of the FameBit family, how this is affecting you. And, you know, I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.